Um, if they are going Okay, well, we'll make a start with Lewis from Sky Sports Sports. Hi, Roy, good Hi. to see you. Thank you. you. Good, thank you, very good. Let's start with you then. So you've decided to stay for another season. Why did you want to carry on? I wanted to carry on because the club... <laughs> asked me to carry on basically and because I so much enjoyed last season working with the team that I was able to work with for those last 10 games so the opportunity to carry on working with them uh, was one that I certainly had no intention of resisting. You probably thought the Wilfred Zaha questions would stop now, and he's not the club, but I do have one for you today, um, uh -huh. talented man of the club for so long, how do you go about replacing a player of that quality? Well, funnily enough, last year we had to play quite a lot of those last 10 games without him because he picked up a, uh, an injury in the first game and then got fit again and then got injured again in the second to last game. So we had some experience of it, but he's done a wonderful job for the club during his time here. And we can't speak highly enough of him. We can't wish him well enough in his, in his new venture. But the fact is you can't expect to have a player like Wilf doing what he's done for you forever. The day is going to come when you have to prepare for life without him. And we've had plenty of uh, opportunity, I think, to get used to the idea. And it will be up to the players we have now to make certain they do as well as they did during the latter part of last season when he wasn't available. Always a worrying time when the transfer window is still open when you're looking at your own players. With Wilf Rizal gone, how important is it for Michael Elise, every Chiesa, to remain as your players? Yes, I mean, I came back here and was happy to accept uh, Steve Parrish's invitation to come back, but I did so really hoping that I would be working at least with the team that we had towards the end of last season and hopefully even pushing on from there, always with the probably fear is the wrong word, but with the awareness that maybe Wilf would not sign a new contract that's been an easier thing to come to terms with but it will be uh, of course a bitter blow now if we have to start the new season with other of our top players being tempted away from us or, or, or other clubs coming in and persuading Crystal Palace to sell them but I must say that there is no desire on the club's part to sell any of those players and we cannot of course avoid speculation that other clubs will be interested in players of that quality. Lewis Hall's a name that's been mentioned as a potential incoming. Have you got any update for us on that? No, he's a Chelsea player. I uh, don't have any information on it at all. Once again, uh, if I was to give you an answer to every name that you put before me that someone somewhere in the press has written about, we'd be here a long time, wouldn't we? One name to talk about, Joel Ward, your new captain. Why did you make that decision? Well, I think it was an easy decision, really. I mean, Joel has been at the club such a long time. He's been such an incredible stalwart of the club. A bit like Wilf, really. You know, he, he's been an iconic figure for us. Uh, I think he has all the qualities that you need in a captain, not least of all the incredible professionalism, the diligence, the way he goes about his daily work and, and the, you know, his, his seriousness, if you like, also in terms of dealing with the, with the group. I think the group are very happy to see him replace a similar figure in Luka Milivojevic and we're very happy, I think, that we can offer Joel the captaincy this year because it's something which, if anyone at this football club deserves, it's him. Have you had any further conversations with Vicente Coetta? No. Um, Sheffield United this weekend then, what are you expecting from them? I'm expecting a very tough game. I think Sheffield United are very difficult place to go. I think they have a, like ourselves, they have a, a really, really good support. They have a, a support that gets behind their team. Uh, Paul Heckingbottom's done a remarkable job with them to, uh, in the circumstances that he's often had to operate. He's produced a winning team on, on many occasions now in, in, in different periods of his time at the club. So we're aware that for us to go there tomorrow, it's a it's a tough one, 
But to be honest, I don't know what games you could have mentioned to me that we would be playing away from home in the first day of the season in the Premier League where I would be sitting here saying, well, that's going to be easy. Of course, it's not going to be easy. Um, we expect them to be really geared up for the game, fired up for the game. Um, we expect to be put under pressure from both the players on the field and they'll have the fans behind them. And these are things we're going to have to learn to resist and find a way of resisting. And then hopefully we can play the football, which I'm hoping we're going to be capable of playing this season. They're going to be clamping down on time wasting. What's been your thoughts on this? Obviously huge amounts of added time we're seeing on games in, mm. in recent weeks. I'm not, I'm not averse to that so much as I'm averse to what might be regarded as time wasting. You know, I think a uh, couple of the yellow cards I've seen where people have just moved the ball which has bounced in front of them a few yards. I don't know that that's been particular time wasting, especially it's happened in the first half of the game. I don't know necessarily that goalkeepers who change their mind from throwing the ball out and then they want to kick the ball up the field so they want their team to reshape. I don't regard that as time wasting. But the obvious time wasting instance instances, I don't think there's anybody in football that's uh, going to be against that. And of course it's it's okay too if you if you work out that goal celebrations are taking a lot more than the 30 seconds we've uh, allotted so far we now need to allot the actual amount of time it takes I have nothing to say about those things at all um, surrounding referees protesting in the way that sometimes we see happening games none of us can justify that none of us can justify bad behaviour on the touchlines so the one thing I would hope is going to be treated with some degree of common sense is time wasting and it will be really deliberate and obviously obvious time wasting that's being punished and not minor instance like I've seen once or twice in games so far. Last one for me, um, you gave Harry Kane his England debut. <laughs> it looks like he could be on his way to Bayern Munich. How big a miss would that be for the Premier League if he was to leave? Be a very big miss for Tottenham Hotspur. I'm mean, actually, I don't, I won't be unhappy to face Tottenham Hotspur this year without Harry Kane. I think a lot of my colleagues will say the same thing. Harry's done a remarkable job since that debut many years ago. He's he's really made himself into uh, a striker of, of of top European quality. Done a fantastic job for England, and of course he's been the iconic figure that you mentioned. Wilf Zaha has been for us for Tottenham Hotspur. So, if if he goes, and I, I don't know if he is or not, but if he does go, then of course that's going to be a major gap in Tottenham Hotspur's squad and lineup. And uh, I'm sure that um, <clears throat> Ange is going to be answering the same sort of question that you put to me right at the beginning how do you replace a player like Harry Kane and I think you'll find it very difficult to, to find an answer Nice stuff, thanks Ray Pleasure okay. Jake, PLP Hi Ray, I just right. wondered if you could run us down any injuries or if you've got a full squad to pick from No, unfortunately uh, Michael Issa, as everyone knows I think he's still out for a considerable period of time after that very bad, very bad injury picked up with France under 21 in at the end of the, well, after the end of the season, um, Will Hughes received was a recipient of a really bad tackle when we played Millonarios in Chicago, and, and that again is an injury which is going to take more time than we've been able to give him so far. And uh, the young boy Matthias Franca, he he's come to the club and they've detected a slight stress problem there, so the medical department don't want to push him into training or. or do anything which could in, endanger him in that area. So for the next few weeks, until he has a second scan, um, we'll have to do without him as well. So they're, they're the, th the three main ones. And how have he and both Jefferson and Lerma been fitting in, or have settled in up until this point? Well, as I just said, we haven't seen Matthias. Okay. You know, he's, he's, not, he's not on the field with us. He's, he's been looked after by the medical department and. I'm hoping that one day in, not, in the not too distant future they will allow him to come out and join with us. He seems to be fitting in quite well around the building. Everyone's 
um, reacting with him and he's even though he's, he's not a fluent English speaker, he's making big efforts and I'm pretty certain in a few weeks' time he will be speaking. And as far as Jeff's concerned, he's, he's really fitted in right from the first moment because he's been in the Premier League a long time and there were certainly no communication problems with him. Obviously, he's played, as you mentioned, played in, in the Premier League. There'll be, I'm sure, some slight <coughs> adaption time for him to fit into a new club. Do you think sometimes... Fans obviously want results straight away from, from new signings. It is, will, it, will it be a case for him then? Well, the fans will like him. He's a, he's a good signing. There's no doubt about that. We were lucky to get him. Uh, his quality as a player, his, his experience, uh, his character, uh, the type of football he plays, um, his wholehearted efforts, which he has made for so many years now for Bournemouth. And, which has resulted in being chosen as the player of the year. I don't have any fears whatsoever that our fans will take to Jefferson Lerma and we hope they're going to take to Mateus as well when we eventually get a chance to see him on the field. Between the end of the season and the, the last season and the start of this one, how different, if at all, do you, do you sort of feel the squad is? Obviously, we talked about players that come in and out, but in terms of the overall feeling, off the back of the end of last season into this season? No, I mean, the overall feeling is good. I mean, the major difference is, is Michael <coughs> or Lisa, because we, we knew when we came back that we, we wouldn't be seeing him on the field for a considerable period of time, and we've still got to wait a, a considerable period of time before we will see him on the field. But apart from that, you know, it's pretty much the, the same group. The difference, perhaps, if there is one, is the fact that we, we have less players than we had last year because quite a few players came to the end of their contract and left the club or, or in some cases, even retired from, from football. So if there's any difference, it would be the fact that uh, our bench at the moment on paper looks a little bit weaker, perhaps it did last year, but that's something which both Steve Parrish and Doug Freeman are looking to rectify. Obviously the game tomorrow we've said is, is, is Sheffield United, I'm sure if you haven't already you'll be watching them obviously from last season, that's, that's I guess all you can do. How do you expect their approach to maybe differ in the Premier League if at all from how they played last season? I don't think we'll see a vastly different approach because they have a very a very clear clear style and, and, and a work ethic. I mean they are a really, really hard working team. And they are a team that never gives up and they are a team that fights for every ball and fights to the last minute of every game and they expect their players to give every ounce of energy and, and, and blood that they, they possess. That's what's given them the success they've had so far. So we we're certainly expecting to see that and uh, we in this game but then the teams that follow us will all have to make certain that we are prepared to match that type of commitment that type of dedication if you like to getting a, a result in the game and then you might hope that the style of play that you have yourself will be able to cause them some problems because uh, that's what Football matches are, you know, you know that you're going to get problems from the opponents and you study them very carefully and you put in front of your own players what scenarios are potentially going to happen. But on the other hand, of course, you hope that what you're going to put in front of the opponents will cause them some problems too. And just lastly, you've obviously, as a manager, started many seasons. Um, I, won't go into, I won't embarrass you and say how many, but... I was just wondering how you feel going into this season, how it sort of compares to perhaps the earlier days. Is it different? Is it the same? No, it's the same. It's the same very much. So the excitement, the the build-up, the, the long, what seems like quite a long pre-season, especially these days with the travelling, all of that really is for this moment that's going to start for me, if you like, at three o'clock tomorrow afternoon. That's what we've been working for. That's what we've been looking forward to. That's really the the lifeblood of our jobs. So I have just as much excitement and just as much ah, uh, hopes, if you like, that things are going to go our way, just as I would have done uh, before my very first game, which, as you say, was a long time ago. Okay, best of luck. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. OK, that's the end of the broadcast section. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.